Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. You are purchased with a preciousness and paid for, made his own. So then honor God and bring glory to him in your body. A shepherd buys his sheep with money. Jesus bought us with his blood. He died and paid for us to belong to him. You are an expensive sheep. So I'm going to be teaching this weekend on the 23rd Psalm. There's so many wonderful lessons on that. I've only done this one other time in my life, but I want you to do something to me before we begin. First of all, I want you to make your mind up that you're not here just to hear, but you're here. You've already pre-decided that with God's help, you plan to do what you hear. I just think things could really change radically for the whole church world if we would approach the Word of God, even like studying your Bible at home or every time you go to church. I think sometimes we just, probably not so much something like this because you had to make a special effort to come here, but I think we can just go to church on Sunday because that's what we do. And we just go to do it, to put our time in to go to church. And yes, we learn, but are we really listening with an intention to do? And see, I believe that whatever I learn, I then become responsible for. And so when I don't know and I don't do, it's not nearly as bad as if I know not to do <laughs> and I do it anyway. So everybody say, with God's help, I intend to do what I learned this weekend. All right, first of all, we are going to read together Psalm 23. It's probably, possibly the most popular psalm in the Bible. And it's kind of interesting, even people who don't claim to even believe that much, if they get in deep trouble and they go hide away somewhere and try to get some kind of relationship with God, it seems like that's one of the first places they'll always go to in the Bible. It's kind of a go-to verse when you're hurting, a go-to place. And... Uh, It's, it's rather short, but you'll find out as the weekend goes by, man, is it power-packed with some unbelievably good stuff. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in fresh, tender green pastures. He leads me beside the still and the restful waters. He refreshes and restores my life, myself. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with him not for my earning it, but for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the deep sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil, for you are with me. That's probably one of the most popular parts of Psalm 23. We, we go to that when we're in trouble. Yea, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear, for you are with me. We're not real crazy about this next part, or we really just don't understand it. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And through the length of my days in the house of the Lord and his presence shall be my dwelling place. In tonight's session, we are only going to cover verse one. <laughs> And yes, I will get through the rest of it in the other three sessions. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Sheep and shepherds, analogies in the Bible. Jesus is referred to as the shepherd and we are referred to as his sheep. A child proudly says, This is my dad. It puts an emphasis on my dad. And I believe when David wrote this psalm, he would have said it more like the Lord is my shepherd. And I want tonight, really my goal in tonight's teaching is for you to come into a place of feeling safe, 
Everybody wants to feel safe, and especially women want to feel safe. They want to feel taken care of. That's just in our nature to want to feel safe. I want you to know that you're cared for, that God has a plan for your life, that he's not mad at you, that he knew everything that you were going to do wrong before you ever even came into relationship with him, and he already in his providential care provided for all of it. God's got you covered. Amen. God's got your back. The Lord is my shepherd, I believe David said. I don't want us just to think about a God way off in the sky somewhere, but he wants to have a personal, intimate relationship with us. The difference in religion and relationship is what I just said. Religion always looks for God somewhere and tries to get to God through works and effort and some certain kind of Behavior. Are you a Christian? Well, I go to church. Well, that, I, that's not what I ask you. That doesn't make you a Christian. I can sit in my garage for a year and that'll never make me a car. Just because you sit in church, that doesn't make you a Christian. Amen? A Christian is not even necessarily someone that does good works. Well, I mean, yes, we, as Christians, we should do good works, but that Doing good works doesn't prove to anybody that I'm a Christian. The thing that makes us a Christian is that we have received Jesus Christ into our heart to be our Lord, to be our Savior. We believe that he is the Son of God, God himself, who took our sin upon himself, who took our punishment, who died in our place, who rose from the dead, is seated at the right hand of God the Father, and as we receive him, he comes to be intimate and personal, to live inside of us, to help us with everything. <laughs> with everything. We had lunch with some friends today that travel with us, and. Actually, Pastor Mike and his wife are on our staff, and we were talking about some things in our life and about our walk with God, and they asked me a few questions. And back in 1976, although I had been going to church for a long time, and, and I was already saved and a Christian, I, um, I needed a deeper walk with God. And many of you, even though you may be a Christian, you may be on your way to heaven, uh, perhaps you're not enjoying the journey, or perhaps you're not living your life in such a way that you intend to take a whole bunch of folks with you, you know? The way I behaved back then, I could have probably kept some people out of heaven. <laughs> because a Christian who doesn't act like one sometimes is more dangerous. <laughs> and uh, so I'm not going to go into the details, but I, I received a real strong touch from God back in 1976, and... Um, they were just asking me what some of the differences were that I saw. And I said, well, for one thing, I began to hear God speak to me. Now, you know, when you, when you start acting like God talks to you, I mean, some like religious folks get like, mm. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I get in all kinds of settings teaching. And I was in one meeting doing a little teaching. I'd been invited to come, and they, they weren't all people of the same persuasion. And I don't know how to talk about God without talking about things that I believe he's shown me and, and, and said to me because if the Bible says, my sheep know my voice, they, they hear my voice, the voice of a stranger they will not follow. We're, we're to have some kind of intimate fellowship with God. And when I say that we hear from God, I'm not talking about hearing voices. It's more of an inner knowing. You just know that God is showing you to do or not to do or he's saying something to you. Uh, you he, he leads you by peace. He leads you by wisdom. I'm not ever saying just follow a bunch of voices, but I, uh, so he asked me what the difference was. I said, well, one thing was I really began to, to hear from God. And I remember one of the first things, I'm telling you this because it kind of shows how personal God wants to be. I was bowling on a Friday night, and it was that Friday during the day that I felt like I'd really had this awesome touch from God. How many of you ever felt like you've just been touched by God in some special way? You know, it's, it's really kind of hard to explain those things, so just you get it or you don't, but you know. Um, so I was bowling really bad that night, and it was frustrating me a little bit, and I heard, I, I felt in my heart 
the Lord say, well, why don't you ask me to help you bowl? <laughs> now, I've, I've been going to church for years. I mean, I, I wouldn't have thought you could have asked God something like that. I mean, you, I mean you, only, you only go to God when you're just really in over your head. Well, see, the thing is, is we're in over our head from the moment we put our foot on the floor every morning. We just haven't figured it out yet. Amen? That's our big problem is we think we got it covered, and we only go to God with these big emergency things. And man, I asked God to help me bowl right there on the spot, and I started bowling better. I got the message quick. And, you know, I don't know, maybe these kind of things sound weird or funny to you, but, you know, the point is, is God wants to have intimate relationship with you. He wants to have intimate fellowship with you. He doesn't want you to keep him in a Sunday morning box somewhere and just get him out for 45 minutes on Sunday morning, think you got this check mark on your religious calendar, and, you know, that now you're a good person, you're going to get into heaven. God wants to mess in all your business. He wants to be involved in everything that you do. So how about, how about having a Holy Ghost invasion in your life? Amen? I had enough of Jesus to keep me out of hell, but not enough to help me walk in victory while I was here. And so the Lord is my shepherd. He comes to live in us. A shepherd is a manager, a caretaker, an owner, a protector, and a provider. Let me say those words again. A manager, yes, he wants to manage your life. A caretaker, an owner, a shepherd buys his sheep. He doesn't just get them free. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 20, you are bought with a price. You are purchased with a preciousness and paid for, made his own. So then honor God and bring glory to him in your body. A shepherd buys his sheep with money. Jesus bought us with his blood. He died and paid for us to belong to him. You are an expensive sheep. That's all right. You can clap if you want to. If you're going to do it, do it. We're not going to patty cake in this conference. We're going to be excited about Jesus. John chapter 10 Let's look at a few scriptures here. The Lord is my shepherd. I'll, see, that, that would just be enough just to hear that. Could say amen and go home. The Lord is my shepherd. He wants to be involved in everything. He cares about helping me comb my hair, how I bowl, drive into work. He, he's not just in on the big stuff. He wants to be in on everything in your cute little life. Did you hear me? Everything. God wants to, he cares about every, every, everything that concerns you. Everything. And that's just like so shocking when you're just religious because we think it's about, well, read a chapter a day and say a prayer and go to church on Sunday and do a few good works and man, hope you go to heaven but not sure you'll make it. Well, my goodness, that's what, not what Jesus died for. He died for us to have intimacy and personal relationship with him. He lives inside of us. He wants to fill your mind. He wants you to talk about him. He wants you to, to spend money on things that concern him. He, he wants to be involved in every area of your life. You, listen to me, you can talk to Jesus about anything. You're never going to get rejected. He who comes to me will in no wise be cast out. You are never going to be rejected. He's never going to laugh at you. He's never going to make you feel ashamed. Nothing is too big for him and nothing is too little for him. He even cared about my bowling. Okay, do you want to know the latest Joyce Meyer thing to the latest, dumbest thing that I did. Are, are you ready? You really want to? Know? How many of you know what A&D ointment is? Last week, I brushed my teeth with A&D ointment. I mean, with an electric toothbrush, I was into it. Fully into it. And then I'm thinking, 
boy, this tastes funny. It's kind of greasy. And, well, let me tell you, between the numbing agent that's in it and the menthol, I had one strange feeling mouth the rest of the night. So let me just say that I don't recommend it. Amen. Now that has nothing to do with Psalm 23, but God loves me anyway. He probably laughed too. I don't know. My kids were texting back and forth on this group text about what I had done, and they thought it was all just hilarious, you know. My son said, that's the funniest thing I've heard all of 2014. So he sent me a note later that night, hey, Mom, when you comb your hair tonight, don't use the scissors. <laughs> all right. John chapter 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. He's not just a shepherd, he is the good shepherd. The good shepherd risks and lays down his own life for the sheep. I thought it would just be worth it to take a minute to make note of the fact that Jesus said, nobody takes my life from me, I lay it down. Everything that Jesus did for you, he did it willingly. He suffered willingly. He bled willingly. He suffered on the cross willingly. He died willingly. He went to hell in our place willingly. And to be honest, we cannot grasp that with our head. Stop trying to get hold of God with your head. It's a heart thing. You gotta see what's in your heart. As soon as you get into reasoning, you're gonna have trouble believing. You need to come like a little child, just like a little child, and believe him. Just believe. My great-grandson, who's two, his mother, his back was hurting really bad last week. Not, well, I don't know if it was last week, but a while ago. And she was hurting so bad, she was laying on the bed crying. And he went up to her, Jeremiah, two years old, put his hand on her, said, Jesus, mommy, ouchie, amen. <laughs> and her back quit hurting. Come on, come to him like a little child. He's a good shepherd. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be eloquent. It doesn't have to be phonetically correct. Don't you love that? I'll tell you what, when you get rid of all the religious trappings, a relationship with Jesus becomes so much fun. It's so relaxing, it's so cool to just hang out with him. Isn't this a great atmosphere tonight? We're just hanging out. I mean, here I am preaching, stopping and telling jokes, telling funny stories. It's like, God is cool, he likes to laugh. He likes to have a good time. You can actually have fun in church. Isn't that shocking? <laughs> He's the good shepherd. Now, sheep do not instinctively take care of themselves like some animals do. There's a reason why Jesus refers to his children as sheep. Sheep need endless attention. <laughs> and a great deal of special care. <laughs> they are prone to disease and parasites representing sin, failure, weakness, flaws, and all kinds of messes. They are very fearful, timid, stupid. <laughs> I got it out of the book. <laughs> About sheep, a sheep book. And they are stubborn. A jackrabbit can stampede an entire herd of sheep. <laughs> no wonder he calls us sheep. But the shepherd loves the sheep, and he takes care of the sheep. The shepherd never really leaves the sheep. He's always there to take care of them. Even though they have faults, the shepherd loves them, and delights in taking care of them. Now let me just take a minute to tell you that you are not a burden to Jesus. 
You are not, you don't have to be concerned about bothering him with all your problems. <laughs> he knew everything that you or I were gonna do wrong before we ever even showed up on planet Earth. The Bible says in Psalm 139 that he knows every word in our tongue that is still unuttered. Every thought that we have not even had yet, he already knows them. And he loves us perfectly. Anyway, unconditional, everlasting, perfect love. Come on, I want somebody to just melt into Jesus' arms tonight. See, maybe as a woman, you've been looking for this kind of love all your life, and you've gone from one wrong man to another wrong man to another wrong man to another wrong man, from one sick relationship to another sick relationship to another sick relationship, and now the devil's got you convinced you are just no good. Well, let me tell you something. Maybe you've been looking in all the wrong places, so you go and you let Jesus love up on you and heal you, then you let your manager and your caretaker lead you finally into a safe relationship. He doesn't want you to go around with holes in your soul. He wants to make your soul whole. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's a good Facebook post, Mike. Jot that down. <laughs> That'll show up. I had holes in my soul, and now my soul is whole. I love it. We're not a burden to Jesus. He wants to take care of us, but there is, I don't really like the word rule, so we'll say guideline. But there is a guideline in the Bible for releasing this care of God in our life. He's waiting with it. He wants to do it. But the Bible says, cast all your care on him, for he cares for you. So here's the deal. In kingdom economy, either God does it or we do it. We are partners with God, and he will give us things to do, but the part we can't do, we need to back off and let God do. Did you hear me? The part that we cannot do, we need to back off and let God do. Can I tell you that I don't care what it is that you don't like about other people you're in relationship with, there is about a 99 and 9 tenths percent chance that you cannot change them. Uh, that's a little depressing, right? <laughs> Nobody's happy about that. But God can. And God can do in one moment what we can't do in a whole lifetime. And not only that, instead of worrying so much about other people that need to change so they make us happier. <laughs> come on, you know where we're going. We need to pray about them, cast our care on God, and then let God work with us. So we're staying busy with God, letting him make us what he wants us to be. Amen. Come on, the Bible says in Matthew 7, judge not lest you be judged. The same measure you use when you judge others, it will come back to you again. Why do you stare from without at the small particle in your brother's eye when you have a beam of timber in your own eye? Get the beam of timber out of your own eye, then you'll see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Here's the thing. Satan wants to keep us busy, busy, busy with what's wrong with everybody else. So we never see what's wrong with us. And, and it's just this... It's just this total useless thing because if I stay busy trying to fix other people, I can't do that. That's something only God can do. But if I'll let the Holy Spirit work in my life, then I can change. But instead of trying to do something you can't do, why don't we start doing something we can do and let God lift the heavy burdens? You know, it's our human nature to want safety. We all want to be in a safe place. And if you have a relationship with God, you can know that kind of safety. 
God is our shepherd. He cares for us and has a good plan for our lives. They know what abuse is, they know what trauma is, they know what it is to struggle with identity, they know what it is to face conflict in their lives, they know what it is to struggle with bitterness and unforgiveness. And Joyce's story and her experience is so particularly relevant to them because they understand that, hey, this lady knows my context. I, I, I might not be able to speak her language, I might not be able to understand her country or her, her culture, but she knows my language of pain and abuse and hurt. And her testimony in their lives gives them hope for their own lives. If, if it can happen for that lady, it could happen for me. Being committed. Being committed is very important. Mobile phones being used by almost everyone on the continent. In fact, there are more mobile phones on the continent of Africa than there are people at the moment. Uh, so this is a really exciting platform and people are accessing the internet, well over 85% of people, uh, through their mobile phones first. So we've got several pages recently that have been opened up in Nigeria, uh, several that have been opened up in Ethiopia, several in uh, uh, Kenya as well, and we're getting exciting responses from that. So it's one way that we can communicate directly to people uh, on a regular basis, but at the same time where there are physical needs, we respond particularly to those through feeding programs and water wells and anti-human trafficking work and skills development programs for young girls that prevent them from being sold into child marriage and secure their education for the rest of high school. I think for me, the thing that really touches my heart is in the midst of all the numbers, because we do, we work with some uh, crazy numbers and I think we get blown away uh, listening to some of the reach of people. Um, I mean, you know, the millions and the thousands and the hundreds of thousands, those figures that come back. Uh, what always catches me off guard a little bit and gets me uh, overwhelmed is when you have those one-on-one -on -one encounters with people and each and every one of them has a unique story, each and every one of them uh, has a unique uh, set of challenges that they've got to overcome, a unique set of pain. Uh, but God's particular love for each individual in each country, in each culture, in each language is what blows me away. Fear is everywhere and affects everyone, including me. But with God's help, I've learned how to move forward in the presence of fear and do it afraid. I wrote this book because I want you to experience the peace that Jesus died to give you. In these pages, you'll learn how to understand and confront fear and change your mindset for lasting freedom. If you open your heart to God, He'll help you embrace courage in the face of fear. Ontdek hoe je vooruit kunt gaan in jouw leven en bestel het boek Doe het, ondanks je angst, van Joyce Meyer. Online via joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100.